the kids wet the bed, and the spouse burns the toast. And what do they complain about? The toast. That's obvious because spouses do annoying things. Listen, imagine you have two neighbors. On one side is a flat house and they're partying almost every evening and throwing beer bottles over your side and playing loud music until the wee hours of the morning and all kinds of other junk like that. And on the other side lives a little old man and his only annoying behavior is that his front yard is a little unkept. Which one is going to bother you the most? The beer bottles in the backyard, of course. Exactly. So how come your kid who wets the bed and that's okay, and your spouse whose only crime is that they burn the toast, that's what you complain about? Well, that's because you expect more from your spouse. So stop expecting and you'll be happily married. That's just ridiculous. You expect more from your spouse because they should be more responsible. Let me tell you something. A woman called me about the issue she was having with her husband. And I said to her, what if your daughter-in-law called you about the issues she was having with your son, her husband. And you realize that the issues she was having with her husband, your son, were the same issues you're having with your husband. So I asked her, would your feelings or commitment to your son change? She said to me, not at all. So I asked her, what did your son ever do to deserve such love and devotion from you? She answered immediately, Nothing. Absolutely, her son should be more responsible. She knows that, but she is not bothered by his behavior. That's okay. That's natural. That's her son. Let me ask you, what would you think of a girl who urinated on your tie? Here we go again. <laughs> Are you sure you're not a proctologist on the side? And don't tell me this happened to you. Yep, it happened to me. Actually, I was wearing the tie at the time. Well, that's disgusting. No, <laughs> it was kind of cute. In fact, she thought it was funny too. In fact, I never told her husband, but I don't think it would bother him either because it was my daughter and she was two years old at the time. How is it that that same behavior is perfectly fine when it's your child? Because you love your kids the most. That's okay. What's the problem with that? Because with our children, we expect so little that anything is great. But with a spouse, we expect so much that rarely is it good enough. Basically, there is nothing your child can do that will ruin your relationship. And any good they do is always appreciated. It's not just that we expect more from a spouse. What we expect is a standard that no spouse can live up to. Listen, it's not so complicated. Why can't a spouse just figure out what they're doing wrong? Let me explain. You never heard these words. I am not getting anything out of this relationship. Think what? People say that all the time. That is, you never heard those words coming out of the mouth of a mother. No mom ever said to her child, this isn't working for me. That's because they're our kids. They came from us. Imagine they call you up from the hospital and they tell you, we're really sorry, but we made a mistake and this isn't really your kid. Would anything change? Can I get a refund on the hospital bill? Probably not. Okay, then nothing would change. I would still love this kid just the same. Do you realize what you just said? Despite the fact that you know it's not your kid, you think about them in ways that makes the relationship work. And with your spouse, you don't. Okay, I know, but that's okay. It's not okay because we could have just as loving a relationship with our spouse as we do with our kids. It's all down to how we think about it. One day your kids are gonna leave and wouldn't you want to spend the rest of your life with someone who you loved like that? Yeah, but 
if I'm not on my spouse's case, but I'm afraid they won't change. And that is the problem with people's marriages. The difference is your love for your children is not conditional and the love you have for your spouse is. We enjoy our children despite what they do. And we judge our spouses entirely on what they do. Even if your spouse were to transform overnight to be everything you think you want, you still would not love them any more than you do now because you have the wrong kind of love. It's a conditional love. Really? I would like to try that. Listen, imagine four buckets. In one bucket, you put all the pain your children have ever given you. And in the second bucket, you put all the pain your spouse has ever given you. The kid bucket would be overflowing with wet beds, throw up, sleepless nights, and all the other junk. And the spouse bucket would be almost empty. In the third bucket, put all the good stuff your kids have ever done for you. And in the fourth bucket, put all the good stuff your spouse has ever done for you. Apart from an abstract finger painting your kid did for you in the second grade, this bucket would be almost empty. However, the fourth bucket for your spouse would be filled to the top and overflowing. Our spouses give us so much and they enable us to have great lives that what we are complaining about is relatively insignificant. And certainly nothing that rises to the level of a wet bed. I am not saying let your spouse off the hook, but you don't have to let someone off the hook to love them unconditionally. You know how you know this? Because we do it with our kids. <laughs> you catch on fast. But we do it even with a dog. Anything that becomes the object of our giving, then we don't mind what it throws at us. A dog can do the worst stuff and it doesn't diminish our affection or commitment because we have decided this is the thing that we are going to give to. And this is the golden rule that it says in the Torah. Exodus chapter 25 verse 2. In this world, you can get as much out of life as you are willing to give because you give your children so much acceptance you take so much love and joy but you can do that with anyone even your spouse and that is what the very holy wise and revered Rabbi Pliskin said to me, may he live long and happily when I got engaged. Marriage is not give and take. It's just give. The only way to get the greatest of loves is through giving.